Shraddha Madhava Kunda Bihadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kopi Janavalaba Giri Varadari Kopi Janavala Ba Giri Varadari Yashodananda Paja Jana Ranchana Yashodananda Paja Jana Ranchana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Parivarja Kacharya Ashtotra Shatashi Shimara Zavayan Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupad Ki Jaya Kantaraj Shrimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. All glories of the symbol devotees. All glories of the symbol devotees. All glories of the symbol devotees. All glories of Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Tell the Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 29, Talks Between Narada and King Prachinibarhi, we're in Text 39. Please repeat after me. Yatra Bhagavata Rajan Yatra Bhagavata Rajan Sadhva Vishada Shayaha Sadhva Vishada Shayaha Bhagavad Gunanukatana Bhagavad Gunanukatana Shavana Vyagra Chaitasaha Shavana Vyagra Chaitasaha Yatra Bhagavata Rajan Sadhava Visha Dashayaha Bhagavad Guna Nukatana Shavana Vyagra Chaitasaha Yatra Bhagavata Rajan Sadhava Vishadashayaha Bhagavad Guna Nukatana Shavana Vyagra Chaitasaha
Where? Bhagavataha, great devotees, Rajan, O King, Sadavaha, saintly persons, Vishuddha Ashriyaha, broad minded, Bhagavat, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Guna, the qualities. Anukatana to regularly recite Shravana to hear Vyagra eager Chaitasaha whose consciousness Tasmin there Mahat of great saintly persons Mukaritaha emanating from the mouths Madubit of the killer of the Madhu demon. Charitra, the activities or the character. Piyusha, of nectar. Shesha, surplus. Saritaha, rivers. Paditaha, all around. Shavanti, flow. Taha, all of them. Ye, they who, Pabanti, drink, of its trishaha, without being satisfied. Okay, all right. So, without being satiated. Nirpa, O King, Gada, attentive. Karnai, with their ears. Tan, them. Na, never. Sprishanti, touch. Ashana, hunger. Tit, thirst. Baya, fear. Shoka, lamentation. Mohaha, illusion. So this is um, text uh, 39 and 40. Tasmin Mahan, Tasmin Mahan, how does that one go? Tasmin Mahan Piyusha Shesha Sarita Parita Shavanti Taye Pabantya Vita Sho Nipa Kadak Karnais Tanas Prashantya Shana Chid Baya Shoka Moha Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. My dear King, in the place where pure devotees live, following the rules and regulations, and thus purely conscious and engaged with great eagerness in hearing and chanting the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in that place, if one gets a chance to hear their constant flow of nectar, which is exactly like the waves of a river, one will forget the necessities of life namely hunger and thirst, and become immune to all kinds of fear, lamentation, and illusion. <coughs> Purport. The cultivation of Krishna consciousness is possible where great devotees live together and constantly engage in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. In a holy place like Vrindavan, there are many devotees constantly engaged in chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord. If one gets the chance to hear from pure devotees in such a place, allowing the constant flow of the river of nectar to come from the mouths of pure devotees, then the cultivation of Krishna consciousness becomes very easy. When one is engaged in constantly hearing the glories of the Lord, he certainly rises above the bodily conception. When one is in the bodily conception, he feels the pangs of hunger and thirst, fear, lamentation, and illusion. But when, it, when one is engaged in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, he transcends the bodily conception. The word 
Bhagavat Gunanukatana Shavana Vyagrachetasaha, meaning always eager to find the place where the glories of the Lord are being heard and chanted, is significant in this verse. A businessman is always very eager to go to a place where business is transacted. Similarly, a devotee is very eager to hear from the lips of liberated devotees. As soon as one hears the glories of the Lord from the liberated devotees, he immediately becomes impregnated with Krishna consciousness. This is also confirmed in another verse. Satam prasangam mamavirya sambhido bhavanti shitkarna rasayana kata tajjo shanad ashva pavargavartmani shadaratir bhaktir anukramishyati in the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and to the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one, gra one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation. And thereafter, he is freed, and his attraction becomes, f and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 25, Text 25. In the association of pure devotees, one becomes attached to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. In this way, one can cultivate Krishna consciousness, and as soon as this cultivation is advanced, one can become faithful to the Lord, devoted to the Lord, and attached to the Lord, and thus one can very quickly attain full Krishna consciousness. The secret of success in the cultivation of Krishna consciousness is hearing from the right person. A Krishna conscious person is never disturbed by the bodily necessities, namely eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Om again, it's a bit under the sea, Gananjana Shalakaya, Chuk Shulan, with it, I mean, it is my she, Gravenam Ham, come, get it, watch, Alam, Pangam, Langa, I take it him, Yakipa, the Maham, one day, Shigurun, did it, Hadinam. Pancha kapa dhri bhishta kripa sindhu beva cha patita nam bhavani bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha jaya shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nitananda shri advaita gadadha shri vas adi gaur bhakta vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay, read the translation again. My dear king, in the place where pure devotees live, following the rules and regulations, and thus purely conscious and engaged with great eagerness in hearing and chanting the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in that place, if one gets a chance to hear their constant flow of nectar, which is exactly like the waves of a river, one will forget the necessities of life, namely hunger and thirst, and become immune to all kinds of fear, lamentation, and illusion. So that attraction uh, to Krishna is something that um, devotees pray for. They pray to their spiritual master. They pray to Vaishnavas. They pray to Krishna. They pray to Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda. They pray to many um, uh, transcendental personalities, different different personalities for this attraction. And uh, yeah, we we should we should follow in their footsteps and also pray for that attraction. Uh, and the, of course, the attraction is natural, but um, in the in the in the material world and material existence, it's as we've heard many times, it becomes covered, it becomes covered. So uh, so yeah, we need to pray. Really, we need to pray. Um, there's a wonderful prayer in this uh, book, <laughs> uh, Padyavali, Sri Padyavali by Sridharupa Goswami, Anthology of Devotional Poetry. And um, I'll just read that. It's uh, text 93 of the Padyavali. So. Asvadyam. Pramada Ritacha Damiva Eva Shavan Um Navam Jopitam Palaya Eva Drisha Uttamavadu Lavanya Lakshmir Eva 
Prod Gosyam Chira Viprayukta Vinita Sandesha Vani Vime Naivedyam Charitam Charupam Anisham Shri Krishna Namastute. So author is unknown. Some of these authors are unknown. A lot of them are known, but this one's unknown. So he's praying to Krishna for and this is a, yeah it's a, again I said, like I said it's a very beautiful prayer and it's something that everybody could relate to and it's something that yeah we could also pray like this we should pray like this and we should hope <laughs> hope now that saying right hope against hope that we could um, attain what this particular devotee is praying for and um, yeah so he says. Praying to Krishna. Oh Lord Krishna, I pray that the remnants of your food stuff, prasadam, may become as palatable for um, may become as palatable for me as a woman's lips are palatable for a materialist. <laughs> There's nothing. Anyway, okay, I'll, I'll go. Um, I pray that the narration of your pastimes may become as sweet to my ears as the words of a young girl are sweet for a materialist. I pray that the sight of your transcendental form may become, may become as pleasing to my eyes as the beauty of a young bride is pleasing to her husband. I pray that I may always chant your holy name in the same way a lover reads aloud a letter from his long separated beloved. It's unknown. So for a materialist, um, the pinnacle of <laughs> all of their um, all of their great endeavors to enjoy is uh, association. What we're talking about, like for a man. A man who's uh, heterosexual <laughs> is uh, the <laughs> yeah is the um, association with a young woman it says nothing's more pal pleasing palatable uh, for materialists than the uh, lips of a young woman so he's praying Krishna please let the let the, let the prasadam remnants of your food stuff become that as palatable like that to me. And uh, the pray that, y that your narrations become as sweet as a, as a young girl's voice is to a materialist. Um, and the, uh, the, the f your form may, may become as pleasing to me as, a, as the form of a young bride is to her, to her husband. I mean... <laughs> Imagining like on a on a wedding day, because especially on a wedding day, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's it's a big day for the couple, and and yeah, the man is very pleased to see his uh, soon-to-be wife, right? Right. Um, and then I was thinking about reading aloud a, a love letter from long separated beloved. Um, I was thinking about devotees when they would get letters from Sri the Prabhupada. The letter would arrive at a temple, and devotees, I've heard, the devotees, it was a common practice, they would open the letter, they would read it out loud, and they would gather the, the devotees around and read it together. So, give us some idea. So, he's saying, may I chant your holy name in the same way, as a lover reads aloud a letter from his long-separated beloved. So, in other words, there's a great, the, 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 um, He's praying for a great uh, attachment and a great ability to become fixed on the form of Krishna, the name of Krishna, have this great attraction. So, yeah, it's a wonderful prayer. Um, and to, yeah, to not pray like that and to not have prayers and to not really be... Um, extending ourselves towards Krishna to the spiritual master, practically that means we're just cheating ourselves. And it's a bit of a 
strange, um, f- it's a strange thing because we're coming to Krishna consciousness. Of course, people come for so many, we, we come for so many reasons, but ultimately we should be understanding gradually more and more and more that we want to develop our love for Krishna. And if we're not understanding that and if we're not praying for that, then yeah, it's, it's a very strange thing actually. <laughs> Because it's like, okay, well, what are we doing here? I mean, might as well just, I don't know, go join the Navy or, I don't know, get a job at 7-Eleven or something. I mean, there's, I mean, there's millions of things to do, millions of places to go. But um, if, we're gonna, if we're going to engage in it, might as well engage in it wholeheartedly, or at least strive in that direction of wholeheartedly. Um, but you know, uh, the loser energy um, is very powerful, as we know from personal experience, and as we hear from scripture. Uh, mama, mama, what is it? Um, yeah, daivyesha guna mai mama maya dratya mama eve prapadyante maya me tam trantate. So Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita that this divine energy of mind is very difficult to overcome, practically impossible. But those who surrender unto me, Krishna says, can easily cross beyond it. So, but the the illusory uh, energy and specifically you could say the materially conditioned mind uh, is not eager for that surrender. Or sp- specifically the illusory energy influences us or we take shelter of the illusory energy. We fall into this uh, state where we're not eager to, and that's a problem. <laughs> because if we're not eager to, it's it's never going to happen, or it's not going to happen for a long time until we get that eagerness, right? Like, uh, who's that? What? Uh, what's that? Greed verse? <laughs> the greed verse? Oh, I'm thinking about the other one. Um, Tat the laulam. Yeah. Maybe we could pass the mic to Javita Prabhu. He could chant nicely for us. And for the audience and for whoever's listening, it's it's a wonderful. Krishna Bhakti Rasabhavitamati Kriyatam Yadikutopi Labbite Tatta Lauri Mapi Mulya Mekalam Jan Makoti Sukutana Labbite. Yes. Maybe you could give us the Actually Prabhupada said that uh, the word the phrase Krishna consciousness came from the first line of this verse. Uh yeah, Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavitamati. So the, the, the mind absorbed in Krishna Bhakti Rasa is the most valuable thing. And if you can, you should buy it. If you can, you know, if you find it, you should purchase it. But you have to have the price. And the price, the only price is your greed for it. Yes. You may perform pious activities for millions of lives, but you won't get the greed and you won't get the bhakti, the Krishna conscience. Yeah. So have to, we have to have that greed. Uh and uh, the example sometimes given of like, say you want, you're in India, right? You're in, or let's say you're in Vrindavan. And, um, and, you, and, you, and you hear that, oh, there's, a, there's that shop at Govardhan, for example. It's famous. Devotees go there and they, and they sell this. What's that sweet called? Um, it's that sweet. It has many kind of layers Huh? Some papri, yeah, yeah, some papri. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> some papri, and devotees, they really like that, <laughs> right? <laughs> they go to Govardhan, and that's like part of the pilgrimage. I mean, you go there and you you know get a box of it, and uh, you know, of course, got to bring some back to the devotees in America, wherever, wherever they're you know, home is. But that's, many devotees, yeah, that's part of their pilgrimage. They go to that sweet shop where they make this very fine sampapri at Govardhan, and uh, they get some of that. And it's, yeah, very sweet and tasty, and yeah. So, um, now the example is given sometimes in relation to greed, right? So, there's those sweets there. Somebody knows there's those sweets there. And if they have greed, they're going to get those sweets somehow or other. So whether they beg, <laughs> please, shop owner, pl- you know, give me the sweets, or whether they steal them, 
or whether they, wh- whatever, somehow or other, they're going to get the sweets. It's not that they pass by there and they think, well, kind of looks good, but I'm running out of rupees. Or, yeah, it looks good, but um, I'm kind of, or, or, yeah, I don't really want to go all that way to get it. Or, I don't really feel like asking my friend to borrow some rupees for him. Or, In other words, there's some reason that they, they don't get it. So that's called uh, not having greed for it. There's not enough desire for it. So, but a greedy person, they'll get it somehow. They'll, they'll borrow from their friends some money to get it. They'll steal it. They'll uh, beg the shop owner to give it to them. They're going to get it because they're greedy. So similarly, we have to have that in Krishna consciousness. Not that, oh, well, it's too difficult. And I kind of tried. And, you know, my mind and senses are out of control. Hey, Prabhu, it's Kali Yuga, you know. Can't do it. Um, but if they're but if devotees develop a greed that no, I, I'm but I'm going to do whatever I can, whatever that whatever's possible for me to do, I'm going to do in order to achieve Krishna consciousness. Now, of course, that doesn't mean automatically we'll achieve it because we need the mercy of Krishna, we need the mercy of the charyas and devotees. But at least we could have that greed to 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 put a, as much energy as possible to achieve try to achieve Krishna consciousness. And that is very, um, that's, as this verse is saying, that's the price, <laughs> is greed. So, but the illusion, the illusion energy, it's, uh, they have a saying, right, that if you say a lie enough, um, or a rumor enough, yeah, lie, rumor, uh, myth, if you kind of propagate enough, and people start believing it. <laughs> I heard recently that a lot of the times people quote that, oh yeah, women, according to uh, Christian tradition, at least at some point in history, in the past, there was some idea that they, people have an idea that they were thinking that uh, the Christians didn't accept that women had souls. This is a common thing around. Um, but apparently there's some articles, this and that, some research done that uh, says otherwise. You know, there was a few people, a few kind of, um, a few people who were maybe in the church, or outside of the church, and they wrote some booklets, pamphlets, this and that, and kind of propagated, trying to quote from the Bible, this idea that <laughs> women have souls. And somehow or other, it carried on until the present, which it's, it's a common thing that people think, oh yeah, women don't have souls. Um, huh? I heard it last night from uh, this man here. <laughs> okay, Mukunda Charna Prabhu. Well, the common thing isn't to think that women don't have souls, but the more common thing that's carried on that he's referring to is that um, the idea that at one point um, in Christianity it was thought that women don't have souls. That that's kind of, I've heard that in classes here and there. And I've heard that even in, in a women's studies course and a philosophy course I took in college, that there were eras in time where people didn't think women had souls. But yeah, there were some articles written about how this misconception kind of became accepted as kind of like, also in this regard actually, vomitorium. I was researching vomitorium, and um, that's also something which... What is that? Vomitorium. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to hijack. I'll talk about vomitorium later, maybe. I don't want to okay. hijack your class. Right. If, you, so if you don't know what it is, it might be good, but we'll talk about it later. Anyway, but that, yeah, that's, that's all regarding women not having souls. That somehow, yeah, it became a thing that at, one point. That at some point in the past, Christians didn't think women had souls, but it, it wasn't necessarily a belief, at least not a widespread belief. Yeah, they said some of that. The, it, it, came, it came to the Pope, and, you know, he rejected it, and this is ridiculous or something like that. Anyways, it, it's an example. There's many examples. Yeah, if you repeat it enough, uh, if you repeat a rumor enough or a lie enough or some type of speculation enough, then people start accepting it. So, so there's been uh, you know great hype, right, the, uh, amongst materialists and the material world. Oh yeah, 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 sense gratification. Yeah, that, that's that's where it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of like really yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really there and. You'll really find happiness there. It is just like, it's just one of those things. It's a lie that's been propagated for a long time. And of course, yeah, people believe it. And then, and then it, people wonder, oh, why, why, is there, why 
why is there such a lack of happiness in the world? Well, maybe maybe it's the lie. Maybe the propaganda is false, and it is. So, um, so no, and, uh, and part of this is that like Maya, Maya's agents, you know, th- there's all these promises for enjoyment, um, but the promises are not uh, like if you promise someone something and you're not able to deliver. Like okay, y- you invest in this, uh, you invest in this um, project with me, and you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna get a lot of money, one hundred, one hundred thousand dollars in the first six months, right? So I'm promising you this, Buck Alex. You invest in this project with me, you get sixty, you get one hundred thousand dollars in the next six months. <laughs> no, this is it's all fictional thing, but. Uh, but if I'm not able to, if I promise that and I'm not able to deliver, yeah, it's, it's a lie. It's, it's a lie. It's a con. So that's what's going on. You know, Maya and illusion energy and materially conditioned mind and materialist. It's just all these false promises and they're not able to deliver. Just like, anyways, um, I Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, he'll give the talk via Zoom next month here in San Diego, but I was um, messaging him a little bit on WhatsApp, and anyways, he was sharing with me some of his, he, he, he does this in Gita daily, he takes every verse of the Bhagavad Gita and he writes something about it, and there's like, there's like a verse, and he'll write little articles, you know, maybe a, yeah, a few paragraphs on each verse, so anyways, he was, um, I, 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 he sent me some links and I was looking at them and he was um, there was some links on uh, material desires in, in, in the Bhagavad Gita like that verse uh, hey, what is it? Sparsha Jumbo yeah uh, which is the contact with material the senses with their sense objects it's 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 just a source of pain right? yeah the pleasure that you get from that is a source of pain. So anyways, the verses like that, and he he's writing certain things on those verses, certain verses. But in one of those, uh, I was I was reading, he was talking about um, the, the act of, of of sex. And he was saying how it's such a, <laughs> it's such a huge lie because it's so commonplace. I mean, it's happening like every moment, like everywhere, all over the universe, um, all the time, you know, so many species of life and whatever, human, all, all over. And it's, uh, it becomes such a glorified, you know, divine thing. But it's just so um, commonplace. And uh, anyways, it goes on, and the happiness derived from it, what is it? You know, so, but... And that, that's the trick. That's one of the trick of Maya is that she, the, the illusory energy makes um, things that are in Maya or, or things that are Maya by, by nature look divine. Like, like David Rita Swami said one time about San Diego, preaching in San Diego. I, was, I, I gave him a ride from the picnic to the temple. And, you know, I was he was there, <laughs> so I want to try to ask him some questions. And try. So uh, we were talking about um, preaching in San Diego, and then he said, yeah, if you sincerely continue preaching in San Diego, Krishna will send you people to help, you know, send the temple people to help, you know, preach, spread Krishna consciousness. And he said, yeah, I know it's a little difficult in San Diego. He said, he gave some like, kind of example about, you know, you're out on book distribution, and of course, you know, books are going out, this and that, but you know, devotees do get no's as well, often. So people, you g- try to give a book to a person, and you know, young man, and he says, "Nah, I'm good." You know, it's, you know, I got my, uh, it's sunny, right? I got my spiritual girlfriend. I got my fruit juice. You know, that's all right. I'm good. I don't need a book. But of course, my is saying sincere people will come. So. People thinking like that, oh, it's so, you know, this, you know, ma- material life is so divine. Um, 
that's that's a problem because they're they're taking something that's illusory and not yeah illusory and they're thinking it to be divine and for a person like that um it it's a great trap because it's actually <laughs> it's actually demoniac you know dem- the demoniac is just right around the corner and it's a problem nowadays because anyways it's, it's a problem yeah so how are we supposed to get out of this um and how are people supposed to get out of this it's uh by hearing and chanting about krishna and about uh pure devotees of krishna um and that is what constitutes a holy place it means a place where uh, where devotees says here uh, in a holy place like Vrindavan there are many devotees constantly engaged in chanting to hear the glories of the Lord if one gets a chance to hear from pure devotees in such a place allowing the constant flow of the river of nectar to come from the mouths of pure devotees then the cultivation of Krishna consciousness becomes very easy. And um, that, a lot of the times people when they're in Krishna, they, they want, you know, it's kind of, they, they think it, they find it to be difficult. But this is Prabhupada's given, it's open secret, it becomes easy. So if people aren't lending their ears to the transcendental uh, messages of Krishna, then things remain very difficult. And then people wonder, oh, why, why is it so difficult? Why am I struggling so much? Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's written black and white <laughs> why you're struggling so much in Prabhupada's books. Uh, because, a person, because a person's not hearing enough of the transcendental messages of Krishna. And therefore, they're actually not residing in a holy place ultimately because they won't be able to perceive it it's it's not perceivable just by l- situating our body in a holy place does not equal seeing krishna or experience having transcendental experience it just doesn't work like that it's not so easy it is easy but it's not easy in that way <laughs> that we have to situ- we may situate our body in a particular holy place but we have to bring our mind also <laughs> and we have to bring our ears most importantly to that holy place. Um, or else, uh, like, like Prabhupada, he was, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Talk was, pr- was given a talk. So many devotees, they went to go see the deity, and Prabhupada stayed, and he listened. Our Srila Prabhupada stayed and listened to his spiritual master. And, and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Talk remarked him, well, this person is very sincere, very serious, he's listening. But Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Talk also commented, what will they go and see? What will they go see, the deities? They, they have to hear. They have to hear. So similarly with deity worship, I mean, it's, it's, it's a challenge <laughs> because the pujaris also have to hear or else what will they see? It's very, it's, and it's, and it, it yeah, and we can't treat Krishna like a doll. We can't treat Krishna like a stone because uh, it's, it's, it's offensive. <laughs> it, I mean, I'm laughing, but it's actually not funny. It's offensive. And um, that's, why, that's why Prabhupada said one time in New Vrindavan, at, at the installation, devotees were very happy and, you know, excited and thrilled. Yeah, Vrindavan Chandra, they're here, Radha Vrindavan Chandra. They're here. Here's a little play on words. They're here if we hear. <laughs> So Prabhupada said, oh, I'm saying that. Uh, yeah. It's a little play in words. They're here if we hear. But Prabh- what Prabhupada did say was that Prabhupada said that at this installation ceremony, he said, we have to be very careful that we, um, that we take care of the deities very nicely, that we serve them very nicely. And he said that this will come by us hearing and chanting about Krishna, or else... If we don't do proper hearing and chanting of Krishna, we'll think, oh, such a, such a burden, these, these, these deities. And then Prabhupada said, <laughs> really, really 
He said then the temple, you know, would become a place of, you know, spiders and, and bats and cobwebs and just another you know, shut down. And that that has happened. It's not that it's impossible. Deities have been transferred to sincere householders' houses and the temple just closed down. So, um, <laughs> anyways, those are just some points. And... It's pleasing. It's not that it's like not pleasing. It, it, it is pleasing. And we could, just wrapping up here, that we could become absorbed in hearing the glories of Krishna, which is the most pleasing, the glories of pure devotees. And someone may say, okay, well, I don't have much attraction to hearing about Krishna, you know, killing Agasura and, and, and you know, killing Danukasura. And, and sometimes devotees, they may have hard times relating or it happens. Okay, fine. Hear about Prabhupada then. If you if you have if you know, read about Prabhupada, hear about Prabhupada. How can you not relate, or how can we not relate? Um, or else we just get absorbed in the characters of this world. We're a bunch of losers. <laughs> sorry, but not not sorry, but right. So, so they're they're a bunch of you know like what the Bhagavatam says, right? Savidvara hosakara, right? Hogs, dogs, camels, and asses. But we just get absorbed in all the people of this world who, or the fictitious people, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, this man, that woman, this woman, that woman, Superwoman, all these fictitious characters. But practically speaking, the people of this world, <laughs> in many ways, they're no ba- you know, they're, they're, they're s- their life is so based in illusion, they might as well be fictitious as well. Characters. So... Um, so yeah, therefore, we should try to hear and chant as much as possible in the association of devotees. And um, in this way, we'll feel, right, Hrit Karna, we'll feel the great satisfaction, well, great pleasure. Um, yeah. So anyways, does anybody have any <laughs> comments or questions? We also have Guru Prasad Swami. I think he'll speak next month. And also Bhakti Sundar Swami is speaking at the end of this month. And Hanumat Prashak Swami. Yeah. Hanumat Prashak Swami is going to speak as well. Prashak, yeah, everybody. A lot of people mess with his name. <laughs> Prashak? Prashaka. Prashaka. Okay. Yeah, it's Hanumat unusual. Prashaka. What does it mean? <laughs> uh, we'll have to do some I'm research. I don't want to guess. I'm okay, sure. we'll do some research. It may be a name for Ram, the one who's most dear to Hanuman. Okay. But that's just a total speculation. Sorry. Uh... <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the very nice class. Thank you. Hare Hare Krishna. Krishna. So thank sincerely. Um, just to point out this um, uh, this verse that Prabhupada quotes in the, in the purport, Satam Prasangan Mamavi, some of this is a classic, you know, that's very often uh, quoted as part of the uh, Sada Sangashtaka, Kapila yeah. uh, uh, in, instructions. And the very next verse in the series mentions how, because after all, he's you know, you know teaching his, his mother yoga, and there's a point there where he talks about meditation and uh, meditating on the form of the Lord and everything. Um, Sankhya yoga, probably. That's, but he, uh, but the next one says this is the easiest form of yoga. This, this, this first uh, gather with the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and actions of the Lord is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced in the path of liberation. Therefore, is free. Traction becomes fixed. Real devotion, devotion service begin. And the next verse describes how, by this process, uh, bhakti apamanjata, that one develops vairagya, which is so important, is essential, but the, the detachment from matter and attachment to Krishna. And then, li- and then it says, th- and "This is the easiest form of yoga: just gather together and hear and chant about Krishna." And that's really the essence of Sankirtan, isn't it? That's the that's the, the so th- so that's uh, given right in the middle of the Bhagavatam. But but the, but the the, the, hu- the difficulty is getting attraction for it and maintaining attraction for it, so that you're 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 pure enough and you're eager enough to come into the association and hear, and then. And Prabhupada uses this word sometimes until you become addicted. You become addicted yeah. to that. Because otherwise you remain addicted to this things of this world. Yeah, yeah. it's like, and somebody say, well, I'm not really attracted. Uh, 
then they say, well, just give it some time. <laughs> you, know, you can't, I mean, in, yeah, just give it some time. Uh, you event will eventually become attracted. That's what Rupa Goswami says. He says to every day, carefully, hear and chant the names of Krishna, and gradually the disease of jaundice will be uh, We'll be free from uh, we'll be free from that, and then we'll have great taste for the sugar cane like you know holy name and pastimes of Krishna. Um, so yeah, it's but or some may say, oh well, I'm not really a, I'm not really a a, a a Brahmin type. I'm not really a Brahmin type, so I I, I I don't have to really go to class, and you know I'll just whatever. But is it is it the Bhagav is the Bhagavatam class? It's 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 supposed to be on the spiritual level. I mean the soul level. I mean we're hearing and chanting about Krishna, about the message of Krishna and Prabhupada, and that has to do with the soul. It's uh, it's on the spiritual platform. It goes beyond all that. Not that oh well I'm not a Brahmin so I'm not attracted. And it's just a you know such a short. I mean it's forty five minutes thirty. Minutes. I mean it's not a big deal. <laughs> So, anyways, it's you have to pray like you like you read that prayer. <laughs> yeah. If we, uh, suppose we have a girlfriend, <laughs> and she's she's off, you know, for away, and she writes us a letter. Yes. Are you gonna say, ah, she got a letter? No. <laughs> yeah, and throw that letter away. Word. No. <laughs> read it. Read it out loud. <laughs> this was in honor of Val. This is again and again. Yeah. This is this is in honor of uh, Valentine's Day. Which I, I think was completely distorted Valentine's Day. I think it turned out to be it was like some great saint, and then somehow it turned into something strange. This is what people do with Christmas, nope. Easter. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> Easter. It's the time of rising of Christ. Yeah, the money. It's the time of rising of Christ. You know, from thing, and, and then becomes a big Easter bunny, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> finding eggs and stuff. It's like, whoa! Well, so I don't know. That's a real big detour. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. Thank you. That was a wonderful class. Thank you. I always like, uh, y you said by aspiring and becoming eager to hear and chant and follow the process that we become free from the illusion of sense gratification, the, the con, the false pro promise of sense gratification and, and, and sex desire, or the pleasure of sex. Uh, I always like giving a shout out whenever I see it in the, in the verses it also said because these are symptoms. This verse gives us symptoms to see to what degree we're progressing towards that which we want. So to the degree we become free from the uh, pangs of hunger and thirst, that goes with the Bhagavatam. How long can you, you know, can you hold off just a little bit? <laughs> you know, to, would you rather feel your ears or, or feel your belly? <laughs> uh, this seems to be more beneficial for us at this stage anyway. And uh, the other, uh, fear, that's a big one. Anger is not mentioned in this verse, but fear and anger are the two uh, driving forces that are uh, being produced by all the kata being discussed on the whole in society today. And then there was lamentation and illusion, which you covered. So uh, symptoms are there, you know, take the pulse. Yeah. Yeah, there's a in the Chaitanya Charitamrita there's a ver verse where um says that oh Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's devotees they shouldn't just live on grains alone. <laughs> but they should live um they should live be nourished by the topics of, of, of Krishna Kata, hearing and chanting about Krishna. And that these will will make them strong. That means their mind will become strong, which is important. We have to have a strong mind, you say strong intelligence, to keep us uh, focused on the path. And or else, he said, "Oh, just eating grains and 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 you know," <laughs> so they just fall down. So uh, there's also that that, but I think in, in a purport, Prabhupada says in, Chit in, in a, not that I think, but in the purport of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada says that. All the members of our of our movement, the Hare Krishna movement, they should all read all all of all of my books. Read all of the books. I, and he said that if they if they oh Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nectar Devotion, Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, all that's been translated. 
should we sh they should read all of those books or else they will just simply eat sleep and fall down and miss the miss the opportunity to reach the goal of life so <coughs> yeah it's it's important Prabhupada found it very important um, we have our Jai Shri <laughs> shout out if you're there or, you know, but Jai Shri and Yogesh and Kusum three devotees in our congregation they're retired um, but they uh, they um, they're reading the Bhagavatam every night one hour and night out loud with each other mm. and now they're on the ninth canto in Ambarish Maharaj pastime and you know they're working their way and then they're going to read the Chaitanya Charitamrita so and then you have our another shout out we have for Bhakta Scott he's uh, our light man here yeah he read the whole Chaitanya Charitamrita so it's nice so yeah it's always oh it's, you know and it's true I mean there's a lot going on and you know there's fast <laughs> I mean but they have that saying Prabhupada used that sometimes drops of water wear away stone so we shouldn't feel discouraged but you know gradually we make progress you know, we should make progress what drops of water away stone Prabhupada gave that example about him writing his purports he said every day I get up and he said I have a taste to do it one thing said I have a taste but every day I get up and I write early in the morning when people like my purports because they have this great taste for it. That's what Prabhupada was saying. He said, what drops of water wear away stone. This is how I've written so many purports. So, and if we don't automatically feel, you know, deep attraction for it or something, we do it as a duty for our spiritual master, you know, the pleasure. We actually get a picture of our spiritual master, read, and you know, there's different ways. But One more ad okay. addition. Well, you would... Uh, um, you talk, you're starting out about greed, getting the, the, the taste, you know, and, and you, read, you read that wonderful verse from the Pajavali, which I think I suggested memorize. It's a nice brahmachari verse. Yeah. You know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, there's another verse probably would quote all the time, yes, jatna buddhi kuna petri And uh, that verse is spoken by Krishna when on the battlefield of Kuchetra when you know not for not before the Gita but when they all met there at the sun, at the, uh, during the eclipse and uh, all these great sages come to see Krishna they come in out of the sky you know big with Shastamuni and everyone and uh, Vas Vasudev sees them coming and he he's very eager to question them about the ultimate goal of life and how to achieve it <laughs> and so they're a little puzzled they say your son is right here I mean this is <laughs> so, so Krishna <laughs> He gets into the mood, <laughs> and he takes on the, the role of an attached householder. He says, yes, yatma buddhi kuna beti <laughs> He's actually coming on it. But the third line is what I'm uh, focusing on. Yatirta buddhi salalena karhiches, that those who simply go to a holy place to take a bath, but they don't search out the learned persons there and hear from them, then they and those who are other gro gross, uh, engrossed uh, bodily consciousness, they're no better than the ass or the cows. So I just, I never thought of this before. Here we are in a holy place, and one of the central <laughs> activities is to hear, yeah. you know, the classes. The, yeah. the, the classes are what Prabhupada set up. The more advanced devotees or more senior devotees, whatever, somehow we just read Prabhupada's books together. Uh, that that uh, you're taking advantage of being in the holy place, the temple, to do what's so essential there and is here in chant. And so that otherwise, we're going to be like asses and cows if we now don't come to the to go to the classes. Now, now, to tell you the truth, I was, I was thinking about uh, th that exact, what you're thinking, I was thinking of. Uh. And I was thinking, I, wanna be, I don't know if I want to be too heavy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, because I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking, yeah, like you're saying, you're in a holy place. We're here, New Govardhan, and yeah, we're all showering every day, bathing in the Ganga, 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 right? Um, Yamuna, Yamuna, Yamuna. But, and we're all, whatever, taking prasad or, you know, this and that. But yeah, we have to hear it too, or else, yeah, like that verse is saying. So. I like that you mentioned the uh, burden. Srila Prabhupada saying it becomes a, another place, a heavy burden around the neck and very much related to he said if you don't engage in this uh, hearing chanting cultivating and preaching then the temple just turns into a mess hall or a hostel where the eating and sleeping goes on yeah yeah and that juhu book that's coming out 
there's a very nice uh anyways it's a whole thing but they're in juhu and they're, they they weren't staying in the temple property they were staying in an apartment and then they were you know staying out late and preaching and they weren't having a morning program really this and that but Prabhupada comes and he sees what's going on and he and he gives this wonderful instruction to these devotees and just like really lays things out super clear in relation to this it's, it's really amazing so anyways when devotees read that yes. <laughs> All right. Gantrad Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai.